So presidential candidate Kamala Harris dropped her economic policy this afternoon. And one of my mutuals put it together in a video and tied it nice with a bow. So I'm going to share his video. Let's take a listen. Yes, Kamala Harris is doing better in the polls. But you know what she's doing even better than that? Policy. Let's check out what her economic agenda is. It's a doozy. Up there, you'll see that there's a subsidy for home buyers, $25,000 for first time home buyers. That's a huge savings. And for a lot of people could make the difference based on what the interest rates are now and their ability to be able to buy a home. You'll also see that $6,000 child tax credit. Now that's for the first year of a child's life. And then it would revert back to the 2021 child tax credit, which was an expansion on the previous amount. So up to $3,000 per child. And this one amazes me, elimination of medical debt. Right now, the Biden administration no longer allows credit reporting agencies to report your credit poorly if you have medical debt. And in many cases, medical debt can't even appear on your credit report. But check this out. This is the elimination of it. This is probably a medical version of the student loan forgiveness program. Now, some people mistakenly believe that suddenly you wake up and all of your loans that you've never paid anything on are all forgiven. The actual student loan forgiveness program works for people who've paid over 10 years of payments on a loan. 10 years. So after 10 years of paying on a debt, the government eliminates the rest of the debt. So this, I think, is going to follow that same kind of a pattern. So it won't just be a free and full write-off all of your medical debt, but it probably is for those people that have lingering medical debt that they've already been paying off. So this is great savings. Now you'll also see, not only are they going to be uh, buying back debt, but they're also going to be forgiving some debt as well. So there'll probably be some negotiations there as well. And you see there, this is a big one, ban on price gouging. You know, we could have certainly used this during the pandemic when all the supermarkets and all of the uh, retail spots that offered food were jacking up their prices and we suddenly were looking at the price of things skyrocketing. And even in recent years, when the price of eggs rose to almost $8. So one way we can stop that is by actually enacting laws that, by the way, the Democrats tried to get passed before but could not get passed because there were not enough of them in Congress. And stop blaming them for things that they can't get done on their own if there aren't enough of them, thanks. But this is the uh, anti-price gouging and that will truly help a lot of us. So it imposes fines on local chains and supermarkets when they engage in unlawful price gouging, especially during times of crisis, which is when we need it most. And this is another big one, a cap on prescription drug costs. So this is Kamala Harris taking what the Biden administration's already done with capping some costs uh, with prescription drugs. I think there are right now seven or eight drugs that are capped the cost on uh, in addition to insulin um, so that they can no longer be overcharged through Medicare. And this is probably going to follow the same pattern as this will also be about capping out of pocket expenses at $2,000 annually. I think we all are going to need health care. Shouldn't it be really affordable and not just offered in an affordable exchange? Well, the cap on prescription drugs is going to make all the difference because after you visit the doctor, the next most expensive thing is the maintenance of your health care or your prescription drugs. You also see there the earned income tax credit expansion. So they're trying to expand it from $3,000 up to $4,500 for lower to lower income workers. Now this is really gonna help them a great deal as well because one of the things they're trying to do is spread that earned income tax credit over the year so that it's a more monthly benefit than it is once a year which can create kinds of uh, financial distress, feast or famine, for a lot of families that really rely on that as a means to take care of themselves. And then we see also the Affordable Care Act subsidies will be expanded, so there'll be even more offerings to that so more people can access the Affordable Care Act, and then also targeting pharmaceutical companies and holding them legally responsible for abusive practices. I'm not gonna tell you the whole story, but if you take time to Google what happened with the Oxycontin uh, case and the billionaire family that's pretty much going to walk away from it. It's this kind of a law that we actually need in place. So she has a serious economic agenda that makes it easier for Americans to live now. The Republicans are all going to say this is too expensive. There's going to be so much debt. Donald Trump put $8 trillion worth of debt in this country in four years. The plan that Kamala is proposing right now looks to be about a cost of about $2 trillion. But what it will do for us as Americans is help keep this great economy that we've got going so far really moving forward and working for most of us when we can afford to engage in it to a greater degree. 
And so I think that really helps us. It's not a trickle down economics theory. It's not a hope that the rich people will hire more of us and open more businesses, which they never do. This is an economic plan that is pretty impressive and that I think most working families, most American families will benefit from greatly. So when someone tells you that Kamala Harris doesn't have a plan, send them this video. Or have I said too much? Baby Kamala Harris is on point. She's got the people in mind when it comes to her economic policy. Let's go. Mm -hmm.